Welcome to my Cisco Scaling Network lab review. We are doing our last lab in this series, which happens to be lab 9314, our skills integration for the class. <laughs> uh, so what I did was I have a Word document that I'm going to be moving over, but I have this in a Word document so that we're going to be working off of that. Sometimes I hate Office 365. Okay, so here is my work, my document. So one of the first things that it tells us to do is under the requirements is we need to complete the VLSM design chart because we're missing some addresses. Okay, so with that said, flat out, I'm assuming that at this point that you've already can do your subnetting. So I'm not going to spend the time going through that portion. Looking at these requirements, I have found specific items. The IP addresses, for example. I'm not walking you through how I got them because again, at this point, you should already know how to do this. 132, 31, 30.254, 128 and then we have the stuff for PCE and PCF 2.31.30.1 this is the default gateway of that guy this is the subnet for both of them this is the default gateway for PCF and its IP address is 30.129. So this is the first step is to complete the subnet chart. Again, I'm assuming you are able to do the calculations for your subnet, so I did not do that. I'm gonna move that off screen. I, just, I can't edit it here, so that's why I did it as a Word document. So here are the requirements, the remaining requirements. So we just finished those two. Next, we're actually going to get into the configuring of the devices. All right, so take a moment, read through it, documenting our addressing. So we've done that, we've done that. Configure the appropriate addressing for those three. So let's go ahead and do the configuration for PCF because we did the uh, addressing. For PCF and E, we just got to make sure that we type in the addressing. Addressing is 172.31.30.1. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.128. Our default gateway is 172.31. Oh, we're doing F. I'm doing the addressing for E. Thirty one twenty nine default gateway one seventy two dot thirty one dot thirty dot two five four. Let's go ahead and program E one seventy two dot thirty one dot thirty dot one two by five two by five two by five dot one twenty eight. Again, I'm assuming that you can do the calculations so that you can figure out this portion here. All right, so we've done that step. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on these areas. Implementing multi-area OSPF, assigning the appropriate areas to the appropriate uh, lands, preventing routing updates, implementing the default route, configuring MD5, and limiting VTY access to R1. So I'm gonna be doing this in Notepad. Just make this a little bit easier for me. So I have off my screen the steps as well. So first thing is enable config T. We wanna go ahead and set up both interfaces for, for 0, 0, 0, 0. Nice thing here is both of these are using uh, IP OSPF. 
message digest key one md5 i'm such a slow typer sometimes and this is going to be this ospf not ospc ospf there we go we're the same for serial zero and serial one next we're going to be setting up our router ospf we're doing this process id one router id all right we are doing area zero authentication message digest we're doing passive interfaces I'm getting kind of lazy so I don't want to keep typing the same command over and over or gig zero zero or gig zero one we are doing three network statements network 172.31 dot all of our networks according to our chart belong here so first one is 172.31.31.24 again i'm just looking at the address chart and programming in the appropriate subnets and addresses that way. Once I have the addresses, don't forget the wildcard mask and what area they're in. Area zero, this one is going to be the same area zero. This one will be 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.3.255. Area, this is part of R1, so area 10 default info info originate all right so that should be our portions for all of that so we've done this we've done the key value we've done this We've done that. Next thing we have to do is we need to do a basic ACL so that we can limit access to our telnet sessions to PCA. So we're doing an access list one. We're doing permit. We're gonna do host the IP address of PCA. access list one deny everything else deny any there are a few different ways to do this but that's how i want to do it so we needed to go ahead and program that into our vty terminal 0 through 15 access class one we're doing it as it comes in. All right, lastly, we have our default route. I, will, I like to do our default routes above OSPF just because if we're distributing our info, if we're distributing information, I like to be able to have that done ahead of time. IP route. Our default route we're sending to serial zero one zero and i believe that's all we needed for router one so let's hop on our one let's paste our configuration and see if there's any errors doesn't look like there's any errors so r1 is taken care of so pretty quick, pretty simple. The nice thing is we can reuse this as need be.
Going on to R2, we are not doing a 0001 interface. We're not doing a default route. We're going to go ahead and update our router ID to twos. We are doing passive interfaces. We are doing area zero authentication. We are looking at these guys right here. We're not doing anything with our default information. So our two network statements, we're going to need our network statement from R1 to R2. Double check in the chart. Should be 172, 31, 31, 248 with a wildcard mask of 0003, area 0. That's what we got. And the next one will be 172, 31, 28.0 with a wildcard mask of 0.0.1.255. This is the land for R2, so that should be area 20. We don't have to worry about an access list or anything. Dang, that was that was pretty simple for R2. R2 based our configuration, R2 is done. Go back this way so we can program R3. Here we have a few more things. We need to program int gig 00, zero with our IP address. Oh, turn off num lock. IP address, we did 172.0. 31.30.126 with the appropriate subnet mask as we outlined earlier. No shutdown and then exit. We also need to program our gigabit 01 interface, which will be 30.254. Again, same subnet, no shutdown, so we're good there. We're using serial 01, same key. All right, for the OSPF portion, we're using router ID 3. Our networks are going to change, so we need to look at both of those. So two network statements. We're going to be doing first network statement 172, 31, 31. This will be 252 because this is going to be between R1 and R3. Oh, fat fingered that guy. And then the next statement is going to be our LAN, which should be 30.0 with the appropriate wildcard mask of 000255, area 30. And lo and behold, that is it for R3. Oh, I don't want to do that. Get that out of the way. R3. Paste that guy in there. I want to give it a minute. Let the uh, ports go into a learning state or into a forwarding state. And we are done. So let's go ahead and check results to verify. All right, so assessment items. All right, it did not like our ACL1. And that was really it. So, all right, we lost one point for our standard ACL. So let's go ahead and back and fix that. All right, hop on R1. I'm going to do a show run. See what's going on. Access list one, permit host 172, 31, 124. And that's what it should be. Access list one, permit host 172. Oh. 
totally fat fingered that. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring back this portion. And I want to bring back this portion. All right, so what I want to do is no, no. I'm going to copy it, get rid of the nose. That way, we can do this in a sequential order. Get back to my config mode, conf t, paste that guy in there. All right, do a show run again. Permitting the correct IP addresses. They're both still in there as our classes. So let's go ahead and check results. And there we go, it was fixed. Sadly, a small fat finger and messed everything up. All right, so this is the last lab in the scaling network and uh, curriculum. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any issues, again, please let me know. Thank you.